Staccato on OpenStack. So I'm Phil Whelan. Uh, we build a, I work on um, a product called Staccato at Active State. So Active State is known for some products such as uh, enterprise versions of dynamic languages, Active Perl, Active Python, etc., and uh, Komodo IDE. But over the past several years, we've been working hard on uh, platform as a service Staccato, which is based on the Cloud Foundry open source project. So what is that? Well, the Cloud Foundry open source project is uh, essentially platform as a service, or PaaS. Um, but it's kind of grown, so now um, it's more referred to as PaaS is just a feature of, of Cloud Foundry. I prefer the term application platform. So um, yeah, Cloud Foundry supports uh, cloud native applications by default. So Staccato. Staccato, uh, as I mentioned, runs on OpenStack, and you can find that in um, the Murano uh, App Store. So you can deploy it on OpenStack straight from there. Uh, Staccato node. So you can deploy one instance of Staccato, or you can deploy many instances of Staccato and wire them all together as a, as a cluster. And Staccato will talk to the OpenStack API, and if it gets too full with applications, uh, it can actually request that the cluster is actually grown, so Staccato can auto-scale itself. So we also support... Um, uh, the last uh, connection there. So we also support um, availability zones. So on OpenStack and many other cloud platforms, you have the concept of availability zones. So you have separate network, separate um, data centers. So Staccato can actually map to those availability zones. Um, it just doesn't like that slide, I think. So you can map to those availability zones. So if one um, availability zone goes down, you can, it will uh, distribute the instances to other availability zones. So Cloud Foundry, um, some people th think it started back in 2009. Um, the Cloud Foundry we know now um, kind of started in 2011 when VMware announced the open source projects. Active State, we're already working on our own platform as a service at the time. So uh, we jumped straight on Cloud Foundry on day one. And then um, in February of the next year, we actually released a commercial version of Staccato which was the first commercial release of Cloud Foundry. And that was version 1.0 of Staccato. Uh, and in 2003, the project moved from VMware to Pivotal, and we got version 2 of the Cloud Foundry open source project. So we released a new version of Staccato that was based on that uh, with Docker under the hood. And now, uh, in 2015, the, the project's Cloud Foundry has grown. Uh, it's kind of like OpenStack's a uh, smaller sibling. Um, there's a large foundation with many, many people joining up, similar to the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, there's lots of moving pieces now of, of Cloud Foundry and separate projects. Uh, some of these are taken and, and pieced together to create different solutions. Uh, we, last week, we just had the CF Summit. And um, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about abstractions. So it's just a generalization. It works in 90% of use cases So to remove common complexities. So OpenStack is a, sorry, let's get my water. OpenStack is an abstraction at the infrastructure layer, generally for network, compute, and data. Whereas Cloud Foundry, uh, it's more focused on applications. So for developers to develop applications. So we really want developers to be able to focus on what they're, what they're good at. And that's writing code. So we don't want to have to give them uh, virtual appliances and get them to install all the system dependencies and build that whole stack. We just want them to focus on the code, build good applications, and then be able to deploy those applications in a very simple way and in a deterministic way. So. Um, Here's an example of a deterministic um, deployment. So I've watched this like 20 times, and it's definitely deterministic. 
So, uh, Cloud Foundry. So, when you deploy your application, we have this concept of staging. Essentially, what that means is um, we'll take a base Linux container, uh, we'll install a, a build pack along with your code, and the build pack will run, install everything that your code needs, compile your code, install dependencies, whatever's needed there. And then we take that and then essentially create a droplet. Or in this case of Staccato, you can also push uh, a Docker image. So you can bypass this uh, whole staging process and just deploy a, a Docker image straight away. So um, you can take that droplet that you've built and, and then deploy it as many times as you want across the cluster. And that's a very fast process because the application is already built and ready to run. It just needs to be deployed across the cluster. OK. So I'm going to give you a demo of Staccato. And get out of this. Can't get out of my presentation. What the hell? Okay, one second. Does anyone know how to get a keynote? It's uh Is it all right if I unplug this and plug it back in? It might have some effect. Ah, crap. I can't get out of Keynote. <laughs> I've quit. I tried. Command Q, yeah, Command Q. Okay. Okay, you got the. Okay. Are you on demo? You want to try and get me out of there? Sure. Sorry, folks. Okay. So, yeah, you can download... Um, Staccato. Okay, we get there eventually. So uh, Staccato is deployed as a virtual appliance. Um, and so you can download Staccato and run it on your laptop. Or you can fire it up on OpenStack, as I mentioned, or you can fire it up on Amazon Web Services, uh, wherever you fire it up is exactly the same version of Staccato. So this is um, a cluster up on HP Cloud, which is running um, on OpenStack. So this is a, a small cluster of five nodes. And when you, you fire up those machines, all the machines have all, everything you need to run Staccato. So you can wire them all together as a cluster and then um, switch on and off different roles. So here we've got... Um, the controller role, that's the cloud controller in, um, in Cloud Foundry. Um, and then um, we've got some, some data services there. The DA is where those droplets are deployed. So um, in Staccato, that's, that's Docker images are deployed there. So we can go to, if you download Staccato, uh, you can run it on your laptop under VirtualBox VMware. You can go to what we call uh, the App Store, which has got lots of demo applications. So there's a good one here, which is uh, Bottle Currency. It's a Python application. It uses a Redis database. 
So when I um, when I deploy that, I can choose the domain name that to deploy under. So it will create a, a subdomain under that. I'll start the application. We can also choose placement zone. So a placement zone might be I might have specific machines that have special hardware, or maybe I want to separate uh, production applications from test applications. So I can do that here. If I wanted to, I could deploy every application on its own set of DA nodes. And DA is basically the virtual machine where the, the ins application instances run, or those Linux containers. So all the, all the logs from every instance of an application are all streamed into a central place. So as a developer, um, when, you, when you deploy an application, even if you've got hundreds of instances scattered across your cluster, all those logs are going to come back into one place. So this is, um, as I mentioned, a Python application. It uses the Redis database. So when I deployed this, what happened is it pulled it down from GitHub, and then it pushed the code. Um, I actually pulled down um, a Docker image from Docker Hub. I uh, deployed that, provisioned the Redis database. It bound those two things together. So I've got one instance of that uh, Docker image running in Staccato. I can scale that up to two or, or more, depending on my number of resources. And you'll notice the second instance comes up on a different machine. So um, Staccato or Cloud Foundry in general um, deploys those instances uh, between availability zones and, and machines. So I've got two, two machines here, 232 and 233. So it's deploying them between those. Okay, I'm just going to jump back onto this machine here because I had my demo set up. Let's see if it works. I won't be going back into Keynote. Okay, so I've got the same example here. So um, I can uh, see which machine I'm pointing at. So I'm pointing at, um, at my cluster here. And I'm using... Uh, it's about uh, 117 gigs of RAM on this on this cluster. So I can push this, and again, this is the, the same demo, but from the command line. Uh, basically, it's pulling down from the Docker Hub. Um, it will sync that into a, a distributed uh, Docker registry, which is inside the Staccato cluster. So it only needs to pull that down once, uh, deploying a Redis database and it's bound those two together and that all happens in, in a few seconds. Um, obviously I'd already downloaded this, this, I'd already pushed this Docker image once before but it, it still checks with the Docker Hub to see if any layer, Docker layers have changed and if they have it will sync the new ones. So I can then um, scale this application up so I can say let's go to uh, 100 instances. So that's going to bring up 100 Docker containers across my cluster. So we can see all those all those instances. That's right. We can see all those instances here. So they're, they're all running, and when I go to that application, um, Staccato is load balancing across all those, all those Docker images that are scattered across the cluster, across um, many machines that are all running on, on top of OpenStack. So you can see you can deploy, deploy applications very quickly um, 
whether you're just pushing code or whether you're pushing actual Docker images. And then you can provision databases very quickly as well and bind those two together. So I can pro provision many, many uh, databases and bind them all to the same application. And this is, this is all running on HP Cloud, so this uh, is accessible by anyone. So this could be a, a production app. You could all access this URL, uh, if you can read that small. And then it's just as easy to free up those resources. And delete that application, delete that rat, uh, delete all those Docker images, delete the database. Um, in just a couple of seconds. So now all those resources are freed up. And so that's kind of the goal of um, Platform as a Service in Cloud Foundry is, is really to iterate very quickly on developing applications. And it's really that layer above OpenStack. So OpenStack is really concentrating on the infrastructure, but we really want to make it really simple for developers to develop code. So um, it's a very enterprise-focused um, architecture. Um, ties in with LDAP or your, whatever your authentication system is. Um, so you have organizations, it's a multi-tenant system, and then spaces. You can have um, users in those spaces that have different roles. So maybe some people can read the logs. Uh, some people can restart the application. In, um, in Staccato, we also have a um, concept of timeline. So you can see things that have happened to different applications. Um, and when they happened, if you wanted, you can, uh, you can start conversations around those things. You can also see those changes over time. So uh, this application here was scaled up to two instances um, and then pushed some new code. So if I didn't like that new code, I could roll back to this version here. And it, it seamlessly um, phases over from one version to the other. OK, so uh, is there any questions? Yeah, so uh, the open source project Cloud Foundry doesn't have a, a web interface. So um, most vendors will create their own web interface. Any other questions? I think that's my time. Um, and yeah, since we are in Vancouver, we're a Vancouver-based company. And um, yeah, we are hiring. So if anyone in Vancouver is looking for a job, come speak to us. So we're at the Active State booth over there. And a lot of us will also be at the Cloud Foundry booth. So happy to answer any questions there. Thank you.